Hello and namaste. My name is Brandon Foltz, and I teach statistics and other mathy things here on YouTube. If you like this video, please subscribe and ring that bell for more. In this problem walkthrough video, we will review linear equations to prepare you for linear progression. Now, I know your time is valuable, so let's go ahead and get to it. All right. A vacation resort rents scuba equipment to certified divers, which we will assume that you are. The resort charges an upfront fee of $25, that's important, and another fee of $12.50 an hour. That is this other part here, also very important. So we can use our handy clock down here to sort of visualize what those would look like. You walk into the rental place, and to rent anything, they're going to charge you $25 right off the bat. So let's say you do that and then you take the equipment and you have it for an hour. Well, they're going to charge you $12.50 for that hour plus obviously the $25 that you had up front. Let's say you do it for another hour. Well, that would be another $12.50 on top of those two charges. So this entire two hour cycle would be $25 plus two times $12.50 because of two hours which would be another $25, which in this case, this whole process would be $50. 25 plus 1250 plus 1250. We're gonna assume that you use it for full hours in those cases. So in business, this is a very common strategy that businesses use. It's a way for them to get some money up front. In this case, the $25 fee to start. And then of course, a per unit charge in this case, time of $12.50. Very common. For example, when I joined a gym, they charged me an upfront fee of like $50, I think it was, and then a low monthly fee after that. And they do that to ensure that they get some money right up front by having that sort of joining fee. And most importantly, the gym gets that fee whether I actually go to the gym or not. So, number one, what are the dependent and independent variables. So in your mind, I always want you to think about the independent variable as what is changing in this problem. So we know that the fees are fixed. So the upfront fee is $25, the per hour fee is $12.50. So what is actually changing? Well, in this case, what's changing is time. So our independent variable here is actually time. It's the $12.50 per hour. And then of course, the dependent variable is just the cost. And this is common to anyone who has an hourly job where you get paid per hour, your per hour rate doesn't change for your job. What changes is the amount of time you are there. And of course, your paycheck is dependent on the number of hours, because your wage is fixed. Same basic idea. So number two, find the equation that expresses the total fee in terms of the number of hours the equipment is rented. Well, we just put everything we have up here into a little equation. So our cost or fee, I'll call it cost, equals $25 up front plus $12.50 per hour, which we can write as X. Now, if you remember, this is basically the slope intercept form of a line. So remember that's Y equals MX plus B. Well, because this is addition, we can rewrite it as Y equals B plus mx. So in this case, the m here, that's the slope. So 1250 is our slope. And what that tells us, and this is very important when you get into regression, is that a one unit increase, so a one unit increase, in this case, time and hours, which is our independent variable, will lead to an increase and the dependent variable of $12.50. So a one unit increase in time and hours will lead to a increase in cost of $12.50. And that's exactly what we did over here. So per hour, we could keep going $12.50, $12.50, so on and so forth. And when we graph this, this will be the slope of our line. All right, number three, let's graph the equation we have up here. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to graph this 
using the two common methods. Make some room here. So we have our equation, which is y equals $25 plus 1250 per hour. So the first way we can do this is using two intercepts. So remember that the y-intercept is where x is zero. So it's the point zero for x and something for y. And then the x-intercept is the opposite of that. That's the case where y is zero and x is something we don't know. So you can think of the opposites. y-intercept, x zero. x-intercept, y zero. Now, we just substitute those in to this equation right here, and we solve for the other one. So in the y-intercept case, we have zero for x. So we rewrite this as y equals 25 plus 12.5. X in this case is zero. So 12.5 times zero is zero. Y equals 25. So the y-intercept is the point zero, 25, just like that. Now over here, we put zero in for y instead of x. So in this case, it is zero equals 25 plus 12.5x. Now remember, we wanna isolate x, that's what we're solving for. So we need to get 25 over to the left. So we subtract 25 from both sides. It has to be both sides to keep it balanced. 25 minus 25 is zero. On the left-hand side, we have negative 25 equals 12.5x. Now we still wanna isolate x, so we're multiplying here. So now we'll divide by the same coefficient. So 12.5 divided by 12.5. 12.5 divided by 12.5 is one. That's one x, we don't write the one, just the x. Over here, we can do some quick mental math. We know that 12 times two is 24. Well, two times a half is one. So 24 plus one is 25. So we know that 25 divided by 12.5 is negative two. So our point here is negative two, zero. So those are our y-intercept and our x-intercept. So now I'm going to make some more room. We're gonna do some very, very crude graphs. So please don't get mad at my uh, horrible drawing. So we're gonna graph this, make sure I have enough room. This is our y-axis, this will be our x-axis. All right, so our y-intercept is 0, 0.25. So we'll say 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, something like that. So we'll go ahead and graph our y-intercept there, which is the point 0, 25. Now our x-intercept is negative 2, 0. So we'll try to keep this about the same scale. So if this first tick mark is five, two would be about right there. So let's go ahead and graph our line. Grab my ruler here and grab it. Just like that. Then we'll put little arrows on there. So here is the graph of our line. Now, this should make logical sense. We have our intercepts. 0, 0.25, negative 2, 0. We've graphed that. And of course, there's no negative time in this case. So when we walk into the shop at time 0, we automatically start at 25. Now, what we can do is use the other form of the line. I'm going to rewrite it down here. So y equals $25, or just 25, plus 12.5x. Now, we can also integrate here the slope intercept form. So this tells us that 25 is our intercept. Remember that's B in the slope intercept form. And this is MX. So M 
is 12.5. Well, remember, M, the slope, is rise over run. So rise up, run to the right. Therefore, this M of 12.5 is actually 12.5 over 1. Again, we don't write the 1 in this case. So if we go over to our graph over here, and we start at our y-intercept, and we go up 12.5 and over 1, we should land on our line. So we'll go 30, 40, and then 12.5 might be around in this area. Then we go over 1 approximately, and there we are, right there. Because our slope is 12.5 to 1. So that means we rise 12.5, then we run 1. And we should end up on our green line, which we do. So this is the graph kind of implementing both the two intercept way of doing it and then the slope intercept form of doing it. Now we could have gone right to slope intercept because B being 25, which is our y intercept, would have given us this blue point here. And then we could use the 12.5 rise over run to get the second point up here. And that would give us our line as well. But I wanted to go ahead and do them both on the same graph. So you could use whichever method is most comfortable to you. So I think that wraps up everything here in this problem. We have our independent and dependent variables. Just to review, the independent variables, what's changing over time. We have our equation, which we graphed down here. And the final thing I will say before ending this is that the thing that makes linear regression linear regression is that we're using straight lines. And the characteristic of a straight line is that the slope is constant. And in this problem, what it means is that this 1250 per hour never changes. Whether you go two hours or eight hours, doesn't matter. It's always 1250 per hour. Now there are business situations and other common applications where the independent variable is not constant. So the one example I can think of off the top of my head, commonly here in the US at least, are parking garages. It isn't the same per hour necessarily. They will charge you more to park for one hour than if you park, let's say two to four hours, it goes down. If you park four to eight hours, it goes down even more and so on and so forth. So the slope of that line is actually a curve in that case because it's not the same per hour. But in this case, in linear regression, the slope is constant. We have a given change in our equation. We have a given change in our dependent variable for one unit change in our independent variable, in this case, which is time. That'll prepare us for more advanced things in regression. So hopefully this gives you a better understanding of linear equations and prepares you for linear regression. Okay, so that wraps up this video. Before you go, please check out some of the other content I have here on my channel. That being said, I appreciate you spending some of your valuable time with me. I wish you all the best in your work and in your studies, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.